I spent years focusing on my career and personal growth and I was over 35 when I felt ready to start a family. In today's world, cultural expectations around motherhood have shifted. Past generations prioritize having Bear in mind that the success rates for these procedures can drop after the age of 35. Did you know your internal clock is essential for your ability to bear children? What do you think about fertility in modern times? You're in your early 30s, thriving in your career, juggling relationships, work and everything in between. You've spent years taking care of yourself and making health conscious choices, living the life of your dreams. But one day you decide you're ready for the next big step, starting a family. Only when you try, things don't go exactly as you planned. And you soon realize something important. Some of those things that you thought were keeping you healthy, your skincare routine, that favorite fitness app, even that healthy diet that you thought was keeping you fit and toned, you know, to get that career that you've been working hard for, might be working against your fertility in ways you never imagined. In this video, I'll reveal seven surprising modern trends that could be silently undermining your fertility, potentially affecting your dream of starting a family. So first, what is optimal female fertility? Optimal female fertility is the time when you have the best chance of getting pregnant. We know it usually happens between 20 and 30 years. This is when your body is healthiest for having children. Your eggs are of higher quality at this time, meaning they're more likely to result in a healthy pregnancy. But of course, other factors play a big role in how easily you can conceive. For example, balanced hormones, a regular menstrual cycle, and good overall health health and habits, for example, not being stressed and not smoking. But as you age, especially after 35, fertility naturally decreases because the number and the quality of your eggs will decline. But what is the extent of this problem today? Infertility is when a couple cannot get pregnant after trying for 12 months with regular unprotected sex. Around 15 in 100 couples worldwide have trouble getting pregnant. And in that group, more than a third are due to problems with the woman. Under a third are due to problems with the man. In around 20%, it is problems from both men and women. And in 15%, we don't know why. So now, Let's work our way upwards from the least to the most impactful reason or trend that could undermine fertility in this modern age. Numbers four and six might surprise you and I'd like to hear in the comments section what you guys think. So number one is perfectionism in body image and fitness goals. By perfectionism, I mean being excessively preoccupied with your appearance. It could lead to extreme behaviors like overexercising or restrictive dieting. Sometimes it might be linked to body dysmorphic disorder, BDD. BDD is a mental health condition where people obsess over flaws in their appearance. A woman with BDD may go to unhealthy lengths to achieve a perfect body and doing so might affect her fertility. Striving for a desired body image, for example, over exercise can cause issues like hormone imbalances and missed periods. Of course, these will affect ovulation and make it harder to conceive. And BDD adds another layer of stress on top of all that. The constant worry over body flaws whether real or imagined, can disrupt both mental and physical well-being, making it difficult to conceive. Studies show that around 50 or 60 in every 100 women who over-exercise experience menstrual disturbances. 
this directly impacts their fertility. In addition, around two in every hundred women is estimated to have BDD. This could increase the risk of extreme behaviors affecting our child bearing ability. So let me ask you, are you in your early 30s worried about how you look and how other people perceive your body? Keeping fit is good, don't get me wrong, but are you training excessively or following a restrictive or extreme diet? Trying to get a flawless physique. If you start to miss your periods, it might be a sign from your body that those habits are harming your fertility. So sister, if that sounds like you, please focus on balance. Listen to your body. Experiencing irregular periods could be a sign that your body is telling you it is undergoing stress. Please get in touch with your doctor or health counselor for both physical and mental support. The second I'd like us to talk about today is constant travel and its effect on our circadian rhythm. In today's world, frequent travel is normal for many of us. This is especially true when we're younger and pursuing careers where you do need to travel for work or business. Exploring different parts of the world while traveling for work is a lifestyle that many of us crave. However, the constant travel can disrupt your circadian rhythm, that is your body's natural internal clock. Did you know your internal clock is essential for your ability to bear children? Disturbance of that clock can mess about your hormone production, making it harder to conceive. This disruption can happen from irregular sleep patterns, frequent changes in time zones, and disrupted routines. For example, the times that you eat, the times that your brain is actively working or resting, and so on. If you have inconsistent sleep schedules, you may have a lower fertility rate and a higher risk of miscarriage. Jet setting around the world is glamorous and appealing, oh yes. However, it could affect your long-term dreams of starting a family. Did you know that women with irregular work or sleep schedules have up to 33% lower chances of getting pregnant? They may also face higher risks of miscarriage compared to those with regular sleep patterns. Imagine if you travel often for work, you're frequently switching time zones and missing out on regular sleep. On the other hand, you might be somebody who works regular night shifts. You may not realize this, but constant travel and disrupted sleep cycles can affect your ability to have children in the future. If your lifestyle involves frequent travel, do all you can to maintain a consistent sleep schedule. Prioritize rest. Use sleep aids like blackout curtains and eye masks. Make it an objective to align your body's clock by gradually adjusting to new time zones. And if you notice any changes in your menstrual cycle, with this type of lifestyle, please speak to a healthcare provider. So now let's take a look at wellness diets, extreme dieting, and even weight loss drugs. Being obese can affect your hormone balance and fertility. It's one of the reasons that it's recommended to achieve and maintain a healthy weight. Certainly losing weight can help improve your chances of falling pregnant. However, even though they're popular, Extreme diets like very low calorie diets can sometimes do just the opposite. They could have negative effects on your hormones and fertility. For example, keto diet focuses on eating high fat foods. You also cut out high carb foods to use fat as the main source of energy. This diet can help with certain medical conditions, but when it comes to fertility, the keto diet has mixed results. For obese women with PCOS, it can help with weight loss and improve hormone levels which may boost fertility. One study showed that when some women with PCOS use the keto diet, they had better chances of pregnancy. However, the diet can also lead to eating very high levels of unhealthy fats and this is what could harm fertility. In addition, they also perform tests on animals that show that a high fat diet could lead to ovulation problems and a lower fertilization rate. So while the keto diet could be helpful in the short term for some people, we need more research to tell us what are its long-term effects on our fertility. When you deprive your body of particular nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, in the long term, it's not able to make enough hormones like estrogen. And there's something else. 
Fasting can trick your body into thinking it's in survival mode. This lowers your chances of getting pregnant. There could also be other health risks with extreme diets that we still don't know much about. About five years ago, scientists found in a study that low-carb diets give you about a 44% chance of having irregular periods, which of course makes getting pregnant harder. So sister, <laughs> you may be thinking of starting that strict juice only diet to get fit. Initially, you see a change in your body and some weight loss. However, you might begin missing your periods. And what you may not realize is that your body is losing out on some nutrients that it needs to make hormones and maintain hormone balance. Our modern society rewards rapid weight loss for reasons more than health. Looking beautiful, money, fame. But if you're interested in having a family at some point, please consider. You need to be careful that you're not doing any harm to your reproductive health by using extreme diets to chase after the glamour and the fame. Instead of extreme diets, aim for a balanced approach with healthy fats, whole grains and proteins. Let's focus on long-term health and not the quick fixes. If you're trying to get pregnant, it's always a good idea to speak to a doctor or a nutritionist before making any big diet changes. And this is also a good place to discuss weight loss drugs like Wigovi or Zempic, which have become so popular today. First, we have no evidence for now to suggest that these drugs could reduce fertility. In fact, there are reports on social media of people falling pregnant while using these weight loss, loss drugs, plus they were also using some form of birth control at the same time. But these drugs could have a harmful effect on a baby. So they should be used with caution under the guidance of your doctor. If you're interested in losing weight with this medication, ideally lose the excess weight first, allow the effects of the drugs to come out of your system, then you can start trying for a baby. So let's look at the next modern day trend, which is constant exposure to blue light and poor sleep. Again, the sun, produces blue light and it's present in fluorescent light bulbs and other light sources. We're even more exposed to blue light today than ever before. And this is because of course of the widespread use of devices that rely on the light emitting diode technology, LED technology. Blue light comes from screens like your phone, tablets and computers. They all use LED technologies with high amounts of blue light. Why is that a bad thing though? Well, constant exposure to blue light disrupts the body's natural sleep cycle, especially at nighttime. And it does this by reducing melatonin, a hormone that helps us regulate sleep. We don't know all the long-term effects of blue light on our eyes, but there is more agreement about how it affects the sleep cycle. Light sensors in our eyes and our skin can tell the difference between the bright blue light of daytime and the warmer red tones in the evening. When it gets darker, these sensors signal our bodies to produce melatonin, which helps us to sleep. But in a study oh, nearly 10 years ago, scientists found that when we're exposed to blue light in the evening, our bodies release less melatonin. This can delay or disrupt our sleep cycle. Well, the next thing is that poor sleep from blue light exposure disrupts our hormone balance. For example, estrogen and progesterone, which are important for fertility. And don't forget, another effect of poor sleep is increased stress hormones, which can further impact your fertility. So now you're asking me, I know, how much sleep do you need to stay healthy enough to have kids? Well, studies tell us that women who don't get enough sleep, so that is anything less than seven hours per night, are more likely to have irregular menstrual cycles. So, sister, <laughs> are you in the habit of spending late nights scrolling through social media, chatting to friends or on forums? You know this messes up your sleep quality. You, I know you know that. But over time, you're going to end up facing much more than just feeling tired or not being able to concentrate. So if you start developing irregular periods, maybe your sleep pattern could have something to do with your hormone balance. So reduce blue light exposure. Turn off your devices about 30 minutes to an hour before you actually settle into sleep. Or if you spend a lot of time in front of the computer or on your screens for work, for example, 
get blue light blocking glasses. Prioritize at least seven to nine hours of sleep every day to help to balance your hormones. So next is chronic stress and burnout culture. Chronic stress means feeling overwhelmed for long periods of time. It's often caused by work, issues in your personal life, or pressures from the society around you. And we've developed a burnout culture in these modern times, haven't we? This happens from constant stress and exhaustion, particularly from work or high demand in other areas. And stress can be a major factor in infertility. Going through infertility treatments itself increases stress, which can lower the chances of success. Chronic stress may affect fertility by disrupting the brain's hormones. This affects the hormone balance that you need for a regular menstrual cycle and ovulation it can also lead to reduced egg quality all of which make it harder to conceive the relationship between stress and infertility is still not widely accepted we're not sure if high stress levels can stop a pregnancy or make it harder to conceive and a recent review of research on mental health in infertility found that between 25 percent to 60 percent of people struggling with infertility reported mental health issues and specifically their levels of anxiety and depression are much higher than those who can conceive imagine juggling a demanding job, family responsibilities, social obligations, as many people do today. Despite trying your best to balance everything, you feel constantly overwhelmed. This ongoing stress could affect your body in ways that you don't realize. And that includes affecting your ability to conceive. So we have to consider at least that stress may be one of the reasons for infertility in this modern era. Try adding relaxation techniques into your daily routine. For example, mindfulness meditation, deep breathing exercises, prayerful meditation if you're a person of faith can help. Setting boundaries at work, prioritizing self-care can also help to reduce stress levels. So let's look at the next one that may be a little bit controversial and that is the over-reliance on or overuse of IVF and fertility treatments. So please hear me out first <laughs> and let me know what you think in the comments section. For so many couples around the world, fertility treatments have created the opportunity for them to have a child when they couldn't do so naturally. But something else that can hurt a woman's fertility is relying too much on IVF and fertility treatments. Now, this is more relevant at a younger age when it could have long-term effects on fertility. So how, how is this possible? IVF treatments are supposed to be helpful. They're supposed to be the answer to infertility, not causing fertility. These are the arguments. I think number three is probably the most noteworthy, okay? So the first is, Fertility treatments could mask underlying health issues, and that's if they are not used properly by a qualified medical practitioner. And what I mean is that sometimes fertility treatments or IVF may bypass underlying problems. For example, not fixing hormone imbalances, thyroid problems, or endometriosis. They just get the treatment. Ideally, these disorders shouldn't be left unaddressed and they could possibly affect future fertility. It's just a thought. The second is physical and emotional stress. So fertility treatments involve the use of hormone medications. They can cause side effects, bloating, mood swings, tiredness, and so on. Multiple IVF cycles can also lead to both physical and emotional burnout and chronic stress, which affects natural fertility. And the third point is the sense of a false security and delayed family planning. Because some women delay childbearing, believing that, oh, when it's time, they've got IVF and egg freezing always available as an option. However, please bear in mind that the success rates for these procedures can drop after the age of 35. And these treatments are not going to stop the natural decline in egg quality and quantity that all of us are going to go through. So let me put this in better context for you. According to the US Society for Assisted Reproductive Technology, 55% of IVF cycles resulted in a live birth for women under the age of 35. The rate was 41% for women aged 35 to 37, and it's dropped to 26.8% for those aged 
38 years to 40. Women aged 41 to 42 had a success rate of 13.4% and if you're over 42, the success rate was just 4.3%. And my last point when it comes to IVF is, are we over medicalizing IVF and fertility treatments? Of course, this is subjective and it only applies to a minority of people. But if we turn to medical treatments, fertility treatments very early on, it can encourage us to overlook the natural ways to improve fertility. These are lifestyle changes, for example, diet and losing weight if we need to, addressing stress if that is a factor, regular exercise and the benefits of that, and keeping track of our cycles. I think I'll leave that thought, but again, I'd love to know what you think in the comments section. Finally, and by far the biggest modern day trend that could affect your fertility is late parenthood and egg quality declining. So late parenthood means that more and more couples and women choosing to have children in their mid thirties and above. Of course, our evolving society influences this trend. Pursuing higher education and advancing your career as a woman has become more culturally valued in recent years. Personal growth and financial stability are also key values for women in society today. All of these can take time to achieve or to acquire. However, the right time for many women doesn't coincide with the right partner or even the right circumstances for childbearing. According to figures from the US Census Bureau in 2022, women becoming moms for the first time between the ages of 35 to 39 has increased by 67 percent. Please don't get me wrong, I agree these choices reflect positive cultural shifts in gender equality and opportunities for women, but our fertility naturally declines with age. As we grow older, the number and quality of our eggs decreases, making it harder to conceive. We also face higher chances of pregnancy complications as older moms and I don't mean that you can't get pregnant as an older mom over the age of 40. Women get pregnant over the age of 40. But in that age group, things like a miscarriage or gene problems are more common. A woman's ability to get pregnant begins to reduce by age 30. It really speeds up after age 35. Before age 30, women have about 85% chance of getting pregnant within a year. By 30, that chance drops to 75%. By 35 years, it drops to 66%. And at the age of 40, the chance of getting pregnant within a year is only 44%. In many cultures, delaying parenthood has become more common and accepted. I spent years focusing on my career and personal growth. And I was over 35 when I felt ready to start a family. Yes, I was better prepared emotionally and financially than I was in my 20s. But like many other women, in a similar situation, I did find that conceiving naturally is more difficult at that age than in my 20s. And that's simply because of the natural age-related decline in our fertility. In today's world, cultural expectations around motherhood have shifted. Past generations prioritized having children at younger ages. But modern women often prioritize self-development, financial independence, and career success before considering parenthood. This cultural shift towards late or later parenthood reflects greater empowerment, but it can unintentionally clash with the biological reality of our fertility. Of course, you cannot control the right timing of your partner and circumstances, but flexible working careers for women in many professions are possible. You can take career breaks in between pregnancies. Many women are successfully balancing active professional careers with having and raising children. It does need foresight and planning. And if you're thinking about delaying parenthood, do consider sitting down with a doctor to discuss your fertility. It's important to do it early on though. Options like egg freezing can help safeguard your chances of having a child later on. This way you can plan around both your career and family goals. But the earlier you do that, 
the better. What do you think about fertility in modern times? Do you agree that we are at risk of losing fertility due to modern trends or it's all in my imagination? <laughs> Perhaps there's some trends I haven't mentioned here that you think should really come on this list. Let me know in the comments section. By the way, there is one trend I didn't mention and which is the impact of EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals. So let me know if you'd like to see a video on that topic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.